Jesus says, I convict and encourage and the enemy condemns and discourages. October 11, 2015 Words from Jesus to Sister Claire Spoken Claire began, The Lord is with us, heart dwellers. He has quite a message for us tonight, a message of preparation and equipping and encouragement. Jesus began, I never expect more from my brides than they can possibly do, and with each expectation comes the grace to bring it to fulfillment. So many of you have been misled by the enemy. It is not I who put those burdens on your shoulders, rather it is a religious spirit, the spirits trained to make Pharisees out of believers. It is not I who lay these things on you, rather it is voices from the past, brought up by demons, charging you with crimes you never committed. They delight to see you fall under the burden. My children, if something seems utterly impossible to you, it is either me bringing forth a proposition to you, or the enemy laying condemnation on you. You will know by the fruit. My spirit is gentle, full of possibilities, full of hope and strength for the journey. The enemy's voice is overwhelming, discouraging, binding and hopeless. If I want you to come up to higher ground, I will present it to you in such a way that you can receive it. But you must be careful to hear me and not the insinuations of the enemy tagging on. For instance, if I wish for you to cut back on worldly entertainments, it will begin with the obvious. Things that are unclean and not worthy of your attention. You will begin to feel conviction. This is not healthy or pleasing to God. And you will feel good about turning it off. Slowly I will replace those worldly consolations with my presence and my consolation. You will begin to reap the fruit of a pure heart focused on me. And it will be so sweet it will turn your heart away from the world as a source of entertainment. This is how I work. If you should feel condemnation and accusation such as See, there you go again, drinking from impure waters, drifting off, watching programs when you should be out witnessing. You're going to be left behind. That is obviously a religious spirit intimidating you and accusing you for watching innocent entertainment at a time you need that relaxation. This is why your intimate friendship and relationship with me is so important. You come to know how I feel about things pertaining to you and the enemy cannot use religion and legalisms on you because you can spot them a mile away. I have broken you free from that. From your experiences in the past, you know well the workings of men. There is a story from the Desert Fathers and the very early church. There were once two monks in a boat crossing a large lake. The brother in the rear was working hard at the oars, while the brother in the bow was sitting back enjoying the breeze and eating honey cakes. The monk in the back began to complain in his heart, why am I doing all this work and he hasn't lifted an oar to help me? Suddenly he saw angels descending and ascending on himself and his brother monk, and the Lord spoke to him, saying, To one is to work, to one is to rest. Both are equally holy in my sight. The brother then continued to row with even greater fervor, 
So delighted was his heart in the Lord and what he had chosen for him. This story truly illustrates that I choose for each what is appropriate. I may choose resting for you for month, and if you do not understand it is me, you will be prone to condemnation and resentment, never really getting the much-needed recreation and rest, but rather going deeper and deeper into condemnation and bitterness. It is true that I call each of you to different seasons as I am forming and perfecting you. Therefore, you should not take on what you think is holy, rather take on what I am leading you to do. Nor should you have resentment or jealousy should I call you to work while others around you are resting. I have seasons for all. It is yours to recognize and accept them in docility. Find your pleasure, your happiness in what I give you to do. Do not compare yourself with others and take on assignments not given to you. Lord, this is where I feel pain. What do I do when people accuse me of things I never intended, like never watching a movie or not listening to music? You never said those things and yet they perceived it that way. My daughter, those reactions come from a soul in a weakened state who has suffered from condemnation, either self-imposed or given from outside of them. They overreact because they are living in constant condemnation, real or imagined. This is why we must handle each soul so very tenderly yet do not compromise on what I am saying. Teach them to listen very carefully and to check with me, to see how that message relates to them. I have called all of you to purity of life, purity in what you view with your eyes and your ears. To some this will be threatening because I have been calling them to this for a very long time and they are resisting me. For others it will be a shock because they had no idea these things were offensive to me. They have not been taught. For those who are willing to obey and please me, the reactions will be fleeting. But by others who have no intention of changing, you will be accused of many things you never even thought of. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. I have explained to you the fruit of admonitions given by me or by the devils. You must exercise this knowledge, moment by moment, day by day, or you will fall needlessly into condemnation and bitterness. There is no replacement for personal one-on-one -on -one time with me. It is your only insurance that the path you are on is the right one. I want to return to what I began to say. I never call my bride to things far beyond her, things impossible for her to do. The devils will try to confuse you, so you will fail in discernment and condemn yourself. Remember, they are all about stealing your joy and your peace. Watch for the sucker punch. Watch carefully. It is their favorite form of attack. Also watch for a slow, almost imperceptible drift into feeling badly about yourself, to the point where you wake up feeling totally hopeless and condemned. 
This is always from the enemy. Always. Please stop falling for it. You are losing your peace, going around gloomy and presenting the wrong impression of your relationship with me as if I were a harsh taskmaster. This is what the devils want you and others to believe. You can't do that. You shouldn't have done this. You are bad for trying that. You know God doesn't approve. Do you know that more than two-thirds of what you hear about yourself is from the enemy, not me? Well, that is the truth. It is of the enemy, not me. And you believe it. This does two things which should be obvious to you that evil is afoot. It alienates us because you hate who you are and it throws the focus back on you that you are bad. How can you minister love to others when you're beating yourself for your so-called bad behavior? You can't. That's the whole point in their attack. Stop you dead in your tracks because you withdraw and disappear from others. When you do that, you are no longer a threat to anyone and no longer can you touch others for me. Oh, don't you see, my little blind ones? Open your eyes. I do not condemn you. These are lies about my character. Don't believe them. I admonish and encourage you. I get you to look at the prize and keep on going. They get you to look at yourself, the failure they say you are, and cause you to give up any further attempts to grow in holiness or serve me. They cause us to drift apart. They cause you to judge others and they represent me as a cruel taskmaster. Do not buy into these lies about my character. Do not walk around gloomy and condemned. This is the fruit from listening to the evil ones. And unfortunately, the evil ones find many willing vessels who have also lived under condemnation. So you will hear these things from those closest to you. Mother, father, brother, sister, pastor, church workers. But if your relationship is solid with me, you will immediately recognize the enemy's signature, condemnation and accusation. So now, I have taught you well. You are warned, armed and ready to take on the opposition who is afoot in great numbers at this hour. They are seeking to demoralize you, looking for your hotspots, places that still carry infection from injuries born in the past. Oh yes, they love to shoot their poison-tipped arrows and make a direct hit into that still inflamed area of tenderness. Be on your guard. They are coming to you in legion, filled with condemnation and discouragement. Do not listen. Do not take it in. Be on guard. Recognize and repel them. Take every thought captive. If it does not align with my loving, encouraging nature, you can be sure it is demonic masquerading as holiness. Now I have warned you, rise up, repel and take captive. Encourage others around you who are under similar attack. Troubleshoot it with them. Show them how I never condemn, but always convict. Show them how I never demand something you are not capable of. Show them that when they hear these things against themselves, it is not coming from a godly source. I admonish, I correct with hope and encouragement, reaching forth my hand to draw you up higher. Defend my character and love others as I have loved you. Go forth now, well equipped, 
I bless you with courage and clarity of understanding to turn men's hearts towards me.